Hi, today we're going to be doing lesson 2.2, which is applications and formulas by me. The objectives of this lesson are to learn and apply the DVPE process, translate between English sentences to mathematical equations, and use shape formulas to solve for missing variables. In the DVPE process of solving, the D stands for data, the V stands for variable, the P stands for plan, and the E stands for equation. In the data step, you write down all the numbers that may be helpful and no other clues that may help unravel the problem. In the variable step, you pick a letter to represent the unknown factor. In the plan step, you know that story problems follow patterns. Knowing the type of problem helps you write down the equations. In the equation step, once you know how the data and variables fit together, write an equation of what you know and how to solve. Translation is the process of translating from English to math. 7 less than 3 times what number is 41? So first we're going to say that we know we know the numbers 3, 7, and 41. The ones that we don't know is the number. So we're going to call the number that we don't know M. Now we're going to do the planning, which is our tr actual action of like translating. So it's going to be our translating step. So now we're going to make the equation. So 3 times what number? So it's going to be 3 times the number is 7 less. 7 less, meaning minus 7, because it's less than 7, is 41. Is, meaning equals 41. Equals 41. Now we solve 3m equals 48, which means m equals 16. So our answer is 16. Next. In example two, Stacy traveled 147 minutes while going 27 miles per hour. Using the formula RT equals D, determine the time that she traveled. In the data step, we know that D equals 81 miles and R equals 27 miles per hour. Now, we need to figure out the time because we don't know the time. So we're going to call that t, which will be our variable. Now we're going to plan. So we're going to use the formula. Planning is all about using what we already know. And now we're going to go for it with the equation. So we're going to insert our numbers. So we're going to have 27 times t equals 81. So we put in our numbers. Now we're going to divide both sides by 27. And we're going to get t equals 3 when we solve. And that's correct. The answer is 3 hours. The following are steps to do when you encounter problems that use rectangles, triangles, circles, or any other shape. Read the problem, read the problem again, and read the problem one more time. Once you draw a picture to module the problem, read the problem again to make sure that your picture fits. <clears throat> In a rectangle, the perimeter equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, and the area equals the length times the width. In a parallelogram, the perimeter equals 2 times the area plus 2 times the other side length. Sorry, 2 times the side length plus 2 times the other side length. And the area equals 2 times the other side length times the height. In a trapezoid, the perimeter equals the little base plus the leg plus the big base plus a leg. The area equals half times the height times the big base plus the little base. In a triangle, the perimeter equals all of the sides together. The area equals half times the base times height. All of the angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees. The surface area of a rectangular solid is two times the length times the width plus two times the width times the height plus two times the length times the height. And the volume is the length times the width times the height. In a circle, two times pi times the radius equals your circumference. And the area equals the pi times the radius squared. In a cylinder, the lateral surface area is two times pi times the radius of the circle times the height. The total surface area is two times pi times the radius times the height plus two times pi times r times the radius squared, and the volume equals pi times the radius squared times height. In a cone, the lateral surface area equals pi times the radius times the slant height, and the surface area 
equals pi times the radius squared plus pi times the radius times the slant height. The volume equals one-third times the pi times the radius squared times the height. The surface area of a sphere is 4 times pi times r squared, and the volume is 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. Example 3. If the perimeter of a rectangle is 56 inches and the width is 12 inches, what is the length? So we know that 56 inch inches equals p and 12 inches equals w. What we don't know is the length. So we're gonna call that L. Now we're gonna plan, so we're gonna use the formula, which is p times two times the length times two times the width. So now we get the equation, which is 56 equals two L plus two, and we're gonna input our information, which is 12. So 56 equals two L plus 24. Now we solve, which is 56 equals 2L plus 24. So then we're going to get 32 equals 2L. And now we have 16, which equals L. So the length of the rectangle is 16 inches. Now we use the, using the formulas for a cylinder, we find the missing variable. Um, so the information that we also need to know is that the R equals 9 centimeters h equals, we don't know, and v equals 356 centimeters. That is part of the instructions. I forgot to include that. <clears throat> In the data stage, we're going to do r equals 9 centimeters, because we, we know that from the given, and v equals 356 centimeters cubed. That's how you label it. The variable that we don't know is the height, because we don't know it, so we're going to call that h. In the planning stage, we're going to get the formula. So V equals pi R squared times the height. <clears throat> now we're going to input our information data into the equation. So it's pi, 356 equals pi times 81 times the height. Now we're going to get, after we put that into our calculator and figure that out, we're going to get 356 equals 257 point 47 times the height and then we solve as before so we're going to divide both sides by 250 sorry i made a mistake this is 254.47 254.47 and we're going to get the height equals 1.4 centimeters the height is 1.4 centimeters now, when you solve for a variable, it's sometimes requests that you solve the formula for a specific variable. That simply means that you are getting the variable by itself. We use the same principles as the other function. So whenever we do this problem, we don't really have to look into the DVPE process. We can just solve. So we have the original problem. And all we're going to do is divide both sides by R in order to get T alone, since that's what we're solving for. And now we know that T equals D divided by R. Once again, we don't need to use this process. So we know that Y equals BX plus C, which is our original problem. So if we're getting X alone, we're going to subtract C from both sides, so we get Y minus C equals bx and, and divide both sides by b so we get x equals y minus c divided by b which is correct example seven negative 3m minus 4pt equals seven and we're solving for m so we have this original problem and now we're going to do 3m equals seven and we're going to add 4pt to the other side now we're going to divide negative 3 on both sides. So we get that m equals 7 plus 4 pt divided by negative 3, which means that m equals 